Hey guys, welcome back to Hollow Knight. Now then, this episode's going to be a little bit weird because I lost the audio to this episode. Um, not the game's audio, just my commentary. So I'm going to be doing a voiceover for this. But today, we are starting the Godmaster DLC. This is the one DLC I have not touched because I've been waiting to, uh, waiting to go into it blindly for this series for my channel. Um, and yeah. I'm not 100% sure how the format for this is going to go in terms of recording and or streaming. Um, streaming might not be the best choice until I can find a way to save, to archive the stream without um, the audio and stuff going out of sync. Um, but either way, you're going to see me try Godmaster and I'm probably going to fail a lot. So, where we're going to be going is, uh, we're in the Royal Waterways, and we're going to be going into that little corner room that we found, uh, our first time here, um, that I unknowingly realized was the way to Godmaster. This wormy-looking place, or fluky, I should say, um, with these big, chunky flukes, I forget what they're called, um, but they're great, and they do two hits of damage, so be careful. So you want to go up here, and there's this uh, little bit of ground you can fall through that can just take you quickly back to where you started. There's also uh, a chunk of money over here. Actually, no, that's not where you started. It's just it's just a chunk of money. But uh, yeah, money. Who doesn't love money? My, not me, not you, not God. <laughs> anyway, um, so you want to navigate to the top of this area. So once you make it through that, you'll wind up in this area, you'll fall down a long way, and there's a lot of garbage around here. There's a little gate that I don't think really you can do anything with. If we head over here, there's a long fall to this very open area of water. We are now in the junk pit. Lots of trash, and a bunch of chests lying around with some money in them. And then we've got this big sarcophagus looking thing. A cocoon chained with a symbol lock. So, we need a simple key to unlock that, but we've gotten every single key up to this point. So, where is the other simple key, you might ask? Well, we're gonna go get that, but first... I decided to explore over here a bit because I thought I figured the simple key would be somewhere here, but uh, it's actually not. So I apologize for that. Also, there's a there seems to be a bunch of um, fungoons or the baby fungoons, whatever the the little baby balloon guys in the background because uh, you're actually geograph geogra geographically close to the fungal wastes, as you may know. On a side note, I kind of just feel like mentioning there's that one, like, big gate that connects, um, the fungal wastes and I think the City of Tears. If anyone knows how to get through that, tell me, because I have no clue, and I never have known. Uh, but anyway, we have this little tunnel we can climb up. And then we got some more fungoons over here. You can see I'm very good at this game. <laughs> a little bit of money. Some more money. Not that you should really even need money at this point in the game, because by now you should probably have a bunch of artifacts, and there's not even really much else to buy other than the unbreakable charms. Uh, anyway, we have a breakable wall. This leads to where this n the nail smith is, which is actually really convenient. So anyway, I eventually realized that I actually had to go to the Colosseum of Fools to get the simple key. Very weird place, you wouldn't think. Um, but yeah, so you want to, uh, head down into the little, what's it, whatchamacallit, the prepping room, I guess, for the fighters. Um, 
and then you want to head up to that little space where you can kind of see what's going on in the Colosseum. And actually, you can break the wall to the right. This will lead you out the ass of whatever skeleton was used to make uh, this the room of the Colosseum. Uh, possibly part of the worm. Um, a little space we can't get into, and a long fall. And then we find this guy! And he is just going to flee from us. Uh, so now we are going to be playing one of these games that game video games just love to throw at us. The chase this enemy around a room where he keeps escaping your reach until you can finally kill him. Um, so yeah, I play that with this guy for a little while. Um, all you gotta do is just kill him. He just flees from you. He also has that attack where he flails about and can throw up those little uh, spiky star things. Um, and yeah, that was me testing out how much damage it did. Um, but yeah, so he's kind of annoying, but, um, just chase him around, and you'll eventually get him. And he drops the simple key. Pale Lurker, forgotten champion of the Coliseum, drawn away by a strange obsession. This odd creature is unaffected by and unaware of the disease drifting through the caverns. Its madness is all its own. Its, its, its madness is all its own. Um, so that basically confirms if there wasn't any sort of doubt that some creatures are simply immune to the infection. Um, and, you know, as we know, most of the mantises seem to be. Um, well, no, they're not immune to it, actually. They might be resistant of it, to it, and they just hid themselves lower into the world, into the fungal caverns to escape it. So, heading back to the junk pit. Now with our simple key in hand. Use a simple key. And some weird, huge old lady came out of it and dropped the God Tuner. A device that resonates with beings of great power. Seeks the gods of Halonest, turn tune their wait, seek the gods of Halonest, tune their power, through their strength, ascend. Very interesting. So, if we dream nail this creature. Blasphemy, rank blasphemy. Thou crawler, thou cringer, cringer, thou smallest of the small, by what right does thou trespass here in this home of the gods? Shrivel away and be gone, be gone! Hmm. Welcome. To God home. Seek power. A bridge. Seeker of gods. A tune. So, this is a bit of a hub for the Godmaster DLC stuff, and as you can see, I saw a bright light, so I wanted to go check out what else was here before a possible cutscene was triggered. 
Um, so each one of these locks, um, things in this area will actually unlock as you progress through the main game. Because um, as you know, you can activate most of the DLCs at almost any point in the, in the game. Um, Hidden Dreams is complicated because it involves uh, saving Breda and saving Zoe and stuff. And yeah, up here is actually just a bench. Um, but yeah. Uh, but this DLC can be activated anytime you can access the junk pit and have a simple key of any kind. So, you know. Um, but yeah, so as you progress through the game and defeat bosses, more and more things will be unlocked in God Home. Um, and I decided to put on a charm set that would be good for combat, because I don't know what I'll be fighting exactly. Over here is a weird... Thingy. I don't know what that is yet. So down here, we got some water. Our mind, a sea. And it's, it's just some gold water over here. Very, very pretty area, I gotta say. I love it. So in this little basement door, we have... A little sign that shows the Hall of Gods. All of the bosses we've defeated, including a few that are remained, remain anonymous. Very interesting that some um, are near the end, while there's a few, like there's one after Nosk, one after Mantis Lords. Um... And there's a bunch after the ghosts, and then between Grim and Nightmare King, and then one more after that. I don't really know what those are going to be. Um, and if we walk near these pedestals, statues will appear. Statues of previous bosses. Every time you defeat a boss, a new one will be unlocked here. That, you know, that, that same boss will be unlocked here. Um, that's one reason why I kind of saved this for the end. I knew that it was going to, you know, the... Th the the theme of this DLC is fighting bosses in harder ways, and so I knew that I should probably have defeated all the other bosses. Uh, there's this door over here with a little blue. Don't know what that is yet. Um, and then, yeah, going back up here, uh, these three doors, they are the Pantheons. Uh, this one is Pantheon of the Master, see the Gods of Nail and Shell, and there are bindings. Now, what I'm assuming this means is that when you select one as it's all chained up if you chain one that means you cannot use that so like if you chain up the nail you can't nail chain up soul you can't use soul charms can't equip charms and shell i assume you can only take one hit i don't know um artist is difficulty two master is the easiest one then there's artist and then sage and i kind of don't like that naming because you know Master being the easiest one is kind of funny because it says something about how hard this will be, but also it's confusing because I walked in and thought, oh, I guess they go from right to left in terms of difficulty. So I just threw myself into this one because why not? <laughs> not really knowing what this was. But so the Pantheons are essentially boss rushes. Um, and we got some dialogue. Wretch, thou hast ordained thine own destruction. Destruction. Through sacred combat are we attuned to this kingdom's greatest beings. By entering this gate, thou hast challenged the very gods of this kingdom. Dost thou consider thyself equal of this pantheon, of its masters? Draw thy weapon then, fool of fools, and be damned for thy arrogance. Hey, lady! I earned the title of fool. You shut your mouth. So anyway, the first boss of this pantheon seems to be Hive Knight. And again, I thought this was going to be the easiest one. And I don't know if this battle with Hive Knight is particularly different. The arena he's fought in doesn't seem to be changed. I don't know if it's I'm just rusty in terms of fighting him, or if his AI is slightly different to make him attack sooner. But either way, I kind of get my ass handed to me here. And as you can see, there's new music uh, for him. I don't know if this is just for him or if this is for most bosses. 
uh, in this mode. I can't actually tell if this is like a remix of his theme because I don't really remember exactly what his theme sounds like. Um, but yeah, so those are the Pantheons. Um, I decided I wasn't going to do those yet because I wanted to see what else there was. So anyway, back in the Hall of Gods that I went back to, if you go to challenge one of the statues, you can select difficulties. Um, and as you can see, Gro's mother, slumbering god of fertility. <laughs> um, you can select two difficulties, attuned or ascended. Attuned means it's just the normal boss. It's just a rematch with that boss. And these bosses can be rematched as many times as you want. So basically, if you ever want to refight a boss, you can easily do it here as much as you want. Ascended, though, amps up the difficulty in various ways. Um... The boss can have new attacks, new AI, or as we'll see here, um, do more damage and have an altered battle arena. That makes this fight with Gro's mother actually kind of hard because it is a very enclosed space and as you can see, there's not a lot of space to stand on and those spikes are annoying. Um, Gro's mother also in this fight deals two damage. So this fight is actually kind of hard and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm doing this commentary as I'm watching back the footage. I don't remember how many times I die to this. I'm going to estimate two. Um, I found myself mostly die mostly taking damage because of, you know, falling into the spikes because I keep walking off the platforms because it, they kind of look slightly bigger than they are, or at least like that one on the left does because there's some background stuff. And also the spikes are like right there, you know, like there's not much fall time. The other thing about Gro's mother is that it's kind of hard to tell whether or not she's about to do the slam attack or the charge attack. They kind of look similar. Which again, isn't usually a problem when she only deals one damage and is fought in a somewhat big room. But in a small room, with three platforms and spikes and dealing two damage, it's actually kind of hard. So yeah. So there's one death. And yeah, there's two deaths.
Eventually, though, I finally kicked the crap out of her. And don't worry, you don't gotta deal with her babies coming out. <laughs> So as you can see, once you beat a boss on Ascended, you will gain a little silver medal down there. I think you also gain a bronze one if you beat it on Attuned. Um, I don't know if it shows the bronze one like next, bronze one like next to the silver one, or if it the silver one just replaces the bronze one. I'm not gonna be fighting these on Attuned only because it's just the same boss fight again, and I don't really need to do that. But when you beat it on Ascended, you unlock Radiant, which is even harder. I don't, I, I, oh god. So there's a lot to this DLC, a lot of challenges, and I'm going to be trying to do as much as I can. My goal is to beat all of the Pantheons and to beat all of the bosses on Radiant, which is quite a feat. And of course, in order to beat them all on Radiant, I have to beat them all on Ascended. So again, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this series. The, uh, this is basically going to be a mini-series for Hollow Knight. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do this. Because um, I don't know how much I'm going to show. Obviously, I want to show anything new. So, you know... I think I'll definitely record myself doing the Pantheons first. And then I'll do the Hall of Gods. Maybe I'll do the Hall of Gods on stream. Again, the only issue with stream is that lately... Um, with what I've been using to stream, which is OBS... Um... I can't, I, I, it would normally, YouTube would automatically archive it, but because YouTube's streaming service has, like, changed, kind of, like, they decided to, like, make it, oh, new YouTube live stuff, and it looks all different, it doesn't seem to automatically archive. I mean, maybe it does, and there's a setting, but I'll have to look for that setting. Otherwise, I would have to record, um, the stream with OBS while I'm streaming, which wouldn't be a problem if it didn't make um, the audio tracks go out of sync. Specifically, it makes my audio and the game audio go out of sync, and it doesn't export them into separate audio tracks, meaning I can't just change the timing of my voice to fit the game audio. Basically what that means is either my audio would be out of sync with the video, or the game's audio would be out of sync with the video. And I really don't like that because it's just annoying and hard to watch. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be try to I'm gonna try to look for some fixes. If anyone else, if anyone knows any good free uh, streaming programs that could help me out that don't have that problem, that'd be very much appreciated. Um, but otherwise, for now, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I think I could definitely do the pantheons as videos, depending on how hard the, the hardest one is. You know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to just do videos for each pantheon, and then in terms of the Hall of Gods, I want to do all of them on Radiant or as many on Radiant as I can. Obviously, though, that means I have to do them all on Ascended first. I I don't know how far I'll get. I don't know how much patience I have, because as you know, I still haven't beaten um, Great Prince Zote on the hardest difficulty yet. I think I'm on like I think I beat him like seven or eight times before I just gave up. So, you know, I don't know how much I'll be able to do, but I'm going to do as much of this as I can, and I'm going to try my best to make it enjoyable for you guys. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. This is basically the introduction to Godmaster, and next time you see me, I'll be tackling on the Pantheon of the Master. See you guys then. Bye-bye.